Hey everyone, and welcome back to the galaxy. Today, we will be learning about some common options brush tools share in GIMP. The brush tools that share these options are the brush tool, the pencil tool, the airbrush tool, the eraser tool, the clone tool, the perspective clone tool, the healing tool, the smudge tool, the blur sharpen tool, and the dodge burn tool. Learning how to use the options in this video will help you to better master each of these tools. First up in the tool options is blending mode. This will only apply the blending mode effect if there is another color on the layer you are painting on. On a transparent layer, it will simply apply the color, but not the blending mode. Instead, use the layer blending mode in the layers dialog for empty layers with brush strokes. If I stroke on a layer that already has some color information, you can see the blending mode apply. Next, we have Opacity. This controls the transparency of the brush. At a lower value, we get a lighter color. Plus, we can see other layers or transparency through the stroke. At a higher value, the stroke contains more color and paints over background layers. Now we can't see any of the white background layer on this 100 opacity stroke. Under opacity, we can choose the type of brush by clicking this brush icon. To further refine how our brush looks, we can use the next few options. Size determines the size of your brush. Aspect ratio affects the height and width of the brush, constrained by the size option. A positive number will squish the brush vertically, while a negative number will squish the brush horizontally. Angle determines the angle of my brush. This is best demonstrated if my aspect ratio is not set at zero. As I change the angle slider, the brush appears to rotate directions. Spacing determines how far apart applications of the brush will be as you click and drag. A lower number will produce a general paintbrush effect with a uniform looking stroke. A higher number will space out the applications as you drag, making it appear choppy. Hardness adjusts the sharpness of the brush. A lower amount creates a more soft, feathered look, while a higher amount creates a more defined edge. Force can be compared to how hard you are pressing on a marker. A lower amount will produce a lighter stroke, and a higher amount will produce a dark stroke. This can be useful for brushes that have a low native opacity, even when the opacity is set to 100. This brush is very opaque even with the opacity set to 100. If we adjust the force of the brush to a higher amount, we can further increase the opacity of this brush. Dynamics affect how your brush looks based on the way your mouse or tablet pen behaves. You can also click this plus icon beneath dynamics to get these extra options. 
I recommend to start by using the presets available by clicking the icon next to Dynamics. You can learn which parameters were used by clicking the notepad icon. This will open the parameter matrix. Let's look at some presets included in GIMP. Fade tapering creates a taper from small to large as you create a stroke. It also starts out with low opacity and the parameter matrix under fade, both opacity and size are ticked. Random color takes the gradient selected under the dynamics option and randomizes it as you stroke with your brush. This preset has the random parameter set to color. Velocity tapering decreases the opacity and size of the brush as mouse speed increases. In the parameter matrix under velocity, both opacity and size are ticked. Note that preset dynamics cannot be changed. Let's create our own dynamic to mirror how the velocity tapering preset works. To create a custom dynamic, select the large dynamic icon, and then click the same smaller icon in the bottom right hand corner of the drop down. This will open the Paint Dynamics dialog, where we can see all the presets. At the bottom of this dialog, we can click this paper with a plus icon to create a new dynamic. This will switch us back to the Paint Dynamics editor dialog. And at the top of this, we can name our new preset. Here, we can link parameters together. Since we are trying to emulate the preset Velocity Tapering, I will tick both Opacity and Size under Velocity. After doing this, let's test how our brush behaves on our canvas. Just like it's supposed to decreasing in both opacity and size as our brush speed increases. But what if we want to reverse this result, having opacity and size increase as our brush speed increases? To do this, we will utilize the effect graphs. To access these, select the drop-down titled Mapping Matrix, and first select Opacity. In this view, we can see the opacity graph and that velocity is checked. We want to click the velocity text to see its graph in relation to opacity. We will see this diagonal line. If we reverse the appearance of this line, we will get an opposite effect. To edit this graph, simply click anywhere to create points and drag them. Let's test how this dynamic behaves now. At a slower velocity, the opacity of the brush is less, but as I speed up, the opacity gets darker. Note that we still have to edit the size dynamics. Again, go up to that drop-down and select Size. And then again, select the velocity graph. Then, reverse this graph. Now, our brush is small and has low opacity when the mouse velocity is low and gets larger and less opaque when the velocity increases. Note that pressure, tilt, and wheel rotation dynamic options rely on actions you take with a digital tablet pen. These cannot be achieved on a mouse or trackpad. To view a comprehensive list of how every different option affects one another, be sure to visit the link in this video's description. Experimentation with the matrix and graphs will be the best teacher. 
Now let's look at some extra options for dynamics. Under Fade Length, I can determine the length of fade when used as a dynamic option. This can best be seen with the Fade Tapering preset. If I set this to a smaller amount, the fade effect is less prominent and shorter. If I set it to a higher amount, we will get a very prominent fade that is longer. Reverse allows you to swap how the fade effect applies. Using the fade tapering preset, my brush starts small. If I tick reverse, the effect now starts large with full opacity and fades in opacity and size as I drag. The drop down titled Repeat tells the stroke what to do after the fade has completed. None will just continue the stroke as normal. Sawtooth Wave, Triangular Wave, and Trunicate will repeat the fade effect. As I draw out my brush, notice how the effect resets and repeats. Color options are utilized when one of the color parameters are toggled on. You can change the gradient by clicking on the thumbnail and selecting from the list. Reverse the order of the gradient by clicking the doubled arrowed line next to the gradient icon. Blend color space can affect the quality of the gradient created. Perceptual RGB is best used when your project is using an 8-bit color space. Linear RGB is best used when your project is using above an 8-bit color space. And CIE Lab is best used when you know your design will be converted to CMYK. Moving on from the Dynamics options, Apply Jitter creates a scatter effect as you stroke. which you can adjust the intensity of with this slider bar. Notice how a higher amount causes more random placement of the brush shape. Smooth stroke can help if you don't have a steady hand. It will reduce the appearance of shaky lines. Adjusting the quality slider bar, you can increase or decrease the amount of smoothing this tool produces as you stroke. Weight can be described as how fast your pen will follow your mouse. At a low amount, the pen moves instantly as I stroke. With this set higher, See how the pen lags behind my mouse, almost as if you are trying to drag a weight behind your brush. A higher weight can help you reduce shakiness you may have in your strokes. Lock Brush to View will maintain the size of the brush at different zoom levels. With this toggled on, the brush size will lock to its size at 100% zoom. As I zoom in and out, Notice how the brush size stays the same while the canvas gets bigger and smaller. And see how they now look at different zoom levels. With this toggled off, notice how the zoom level also affects how we see the brush size. It will create the same size stroke at every zoom level in relation to your canvas. Incremental is best demonstrated on a stroke with low opacity. First, I will create a stroke with incremental toggled off. See how it has created one fluid stroke. Next, I will toggle on incremental. Notice how every instance the brush lays down color, it creates a new brush shape. If we zoom in, we can see this a little bit better. Each brush shape 
is separate instead of the uniform one if we have this toggled off. And that's it. You've now mastered the common options of the brush tools in GIMP. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you did, consider subscribing for more awesome content. Let us know if you found this tutorial helpful by liking this video and leaving us a comment. Thanks for watching.